live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hi everybody and welcome to yet another episode of Ask an Engineer. We do this every single Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Me, Lady Ada, the engineer with me is Mr. Lady Ada. Uh, and we're here at the Adafruit headquarters in downtown Manhattan. We do all the testing, shipping, coding, microcontroller, firmware, hacking, debugging, manufacturing and shipping and packaging of all the electronic goodies that you know and love from the Adafruit factory. That's us. And we've got a exciting show for you tonight. We've got all sorts of news. We've got giveaways and we've got videos and we've got 3D printing stuff. Uh, we've got an exciting show for you tonight, um, including, as you just saw, Adabox subscriptions are closing really, really soon. So uh, probably by the end of this show, we will run out of subscriptions. We have a limited number. So if uh, you're on the fence, you're like, I don't know, should I subscribe to this Adabox? Now is the time to do it. Like now, now, now. Like if you're watching this live. If you're not watching this live, it's probably too late. But if you're watching yeah. this live, do it now. Um, but beyond that, we've got an exciting show for them tonight. Mr. Lady Ada, do you want to talk about that? On tonight's show, the code is GPS USB. Yay! We'll talk about that now. Or later, probably later. Later. But that's the code, and that is what you should use at Adafruit Shop. Check out before midnight or when I remember to turn it off. You it get gets you 10 percent off in the Adafruit store all the way up to midnight usually. But like I said, or until I remember to turn it off. Um, Everything except for certificates, Adabox, and code uh, code subscriptions to Code Academy. That's right. So anything that's physical, virtual stuff, no discounts because that's not how it works. Um, but so then, other than that, us, an open source hardware company, no loans, no venture capital. We'll probably talk about some micro business stuff that was in the news this week. But when you purchase something from us, use this code, save a buck or two. These are the folks you're supporting and more. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady, I'll talk about that and more. Get Make Code Minute, some cool Make Code Arcade examples and more. Some Python on hardware news. Try time travel, looking around the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, and more. 3D printing videos, some main New York City factory footage. If you have some new products, we'll answer your questions. We'll do that in Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. Go Join sign up. all almost 13,000 of us now. We'll Having a good Discord. time. Yeah. We'll do some top secret. We'll give away something. All that and more on, you guessed it. Dun dun dun. Ask an engineer. Yes. Okay, Lady Ada. So we uh, we got the discount code, but we also do other things. We give away free stuff. That's right. Whenever you place an order on the Adafruit uh, web store, we will give you free goodies. When you order ninety nine dollars or more, you get a free Promoto half size breadboard. This PCB, which is uh, has a beautiful silk screen and gold plated pads, is the same size and shape as a solderless half size breadboard. So when you're done with your project, you can transfer it over, solder it up, and you have a permanent prototype. That's Promoto. 149 or more, you'll get a selection from one of our many embroidered or iron-on patches. We've got all these really cool patches for learning things from Bitcoin to LEDs to robotics to laser cutters to Ruby to HTML5. Pretty much every cool skill other than selling cookies uh, and making a forest fire. Then uh, you can get a free badge and we'll pick a, a random one for you. And if you make an account, we'll make sure you get a different one each time because we'll keep track of which badges you've already gotten. Um, $1.99 or more, you get free UPS ground shipping in the continental United States. That's high quality, trackable shipping with insurance. We recommend it for UPS, uh, for shipping in the continental United States. And then $2.99 or more, you get a free Circuit Playground Express, our premier all-in-one development board for learning how to make and code and craft with electronics. It's got LEDs and buttons and sensors and capacitive pads and you run off a battery and speaker and you can run it with code.org, CS Discoveries, Circuit Python, Make Code, um, Maker Blocks, Teeny Go and a Teeny Rust, a whole bunch of other stuff. So uh, whatever way you want to program electronics, this is a great way to get started with no soldering required. All right. As far as shipping goes, in the United States, use UPS Ground. It'll get there trackable, reliable. If you want to spend a little less, but wait a little bit longer, and maybe some uncertainty, if you're into uncertainty. Maybe some people like uncertainty. Yeah. USPS is the next choice. And then for international, use DHL. In New York City, we have same-day delivery service. Just purchase your order in New York City before 11 a.m. If it's a zip code that's supported, we will then ship it out. You'll get it the same day. It's possible. Yep. All right. Lady Ada, we had a show and tell. There was a bunch of people on it. 
Yeah. There was a lot of people, and they went fast. Everyone was showing stuff. We've been doing this for like 10 years, and every week people come to the show and show cool stuff. How is that possible? It's like a, it's like a year-long celebration of people making stuff. That's right. That's why. That's Great. how. Okay. All right. What was on the show and tell? Well, we had Philby who came by and previewed a project that he's been working on a couple, like a year and a half ago. We did the Joy um, Arcade, which is a um, little face in a, a handheld game controller that blinks and looks around as you play games and it acts like an HID keyboard uh, and mouse. And now we did the same thing for um, Arcada, so for the Pi Gamer or Pi Badge. You can sell this code and um, as you're gaming, uh, Joy looks around, her little eyes follow you, and also um, when you press the A button, it sometimes goes pew pew um, as you shoot at stuff in your game. Uh, and that's going to be a guy coming soon from Phil B. Uh, it's just adorable um, code that's been updated for the latest boards that we're making. JP showed off a ga uh, game that he's writing this week, and you can uh, see more of that game development tomorrow. It's called Trash Panda, and uh, it's kind of like a cross between... Um, that raccoon that would climb to the top of the UBS building and Rampage, classic arcade game. Um, what, how do you play it? Well, you can watch Make Code Minute or John Park Workshop to find out more about Trash Panda the game. It totally could have been a really cool Nintendo game. I could have, I could have seen it's it. not too late. Not too late. Um, then Pedro showed off a bunch of mini projects. We'll show all the videos, but they had a SnapFit uh, Pi Gamer case. They had a Pi Gamer case with a crank, and they had another HID uh, mini crank project. So they're kind of experimenting with different 3D print techniques and uh, Pi Gamer cases. Dan Halbert um, t t uh, told us about his story of someone uh, saying that Circuit Playground was a little bit too slow and you know why is it slow compared to MicroPython. He investigated, found out what was slowing it down and he removed that thing and now Circuit Python is like 10 times faster um, for CPU bound stuff and he showed an example with a Circuit Playground um, doing LED stuff, it's twice as fast uh, just with his changes. And Scott also came by to show off his um, display I.O. updates. Uh, he was playing uh, his Celeste port from uh, CircuitPython. He has um, ported it from uh, Lua, also Pico8, to CircuitPython and was playing Celeste and um, has been doing a lot of work on how to speed up um, displays. So uh, 4.1 is coming out soon with both those updates. So I think people see some really big speed ups, especially if you're using display stuff, but even if you're not, uh, you're doing CPU stuff, um, you will see a lot of big updates, which is good. We were kind of hoping 4.0 would add more chip support and 4.1 would speed up those chips as well. You also have some people from the community. Andy Lear came by with three projects. He's got a Pi Portal um, that mimics this Penny Seer from, I guess, like season two, episode six of the classic Twilight Zone. I guess Shatner goes to a restaurant and there's this demon in a box, so it it's kind of like oblique strategies, but it's evil, I guess. I haven't seen this episode. Well, it's, it's Twilight Zone, so, so it's, it's not, not necessarily evil. evil. It's kind of like It people, uncovers the darkness within. Sometimes, you know, the choices you make, they come back and you're yeah. presented with them. Okay. It's very Twilight Zone very when you look at it. Twilight Zone. He also had a 3D printed dot bot that he made for his daughter, uh, and they had a little uh, project uh, adventure during a birthday party where they made light night lights. And also he made a Pi game with Make Code Arcade where he is the character and he has to catch his daughter because she's always slippery. She's always getting out of his little fingers when he's like, you have to take a bath, you have to go to bed, you have to brush your teeth. So she runs away and he has to try to catch her. And uh, if she doesn't catch her in time, she wins. So that's the story of life. Um, Zen came by and showed off a scene and say that was been hacked. Uh, to play songs from his friend's um, band's record album release party. Uh, so it's a CNC that just plays like whatever song, you know, you, you make it uh, point at an animal and you pull the string and it plays a different song. Um, so it's kind of like a really cool interactive record. And uh, it's really neat. And I think it really, you know, if, if you're gonna do a record release, you just have one, instead of a gold plate record, have a CNC electronics record instead. Uh, so that's really cool. And then Orlando is building um, his instrumentation handheld for the high school class he teaches every summer. Uh, thanks to Osh Park for helping out with that. It's got a SAMD21 and OLED, infrared and light sensors, accelerometers, uh, can do heart rate and pulse oximetry and motion detection. And uh, it's got all this cool circuitry and he's, he showed us the schematic. Uh, so it's kind of like a handheld watch that can do all sorts of cool analog 
um, bio instrumentation. So if you're in this high school class, you're in for a treat. He's going to put this together this week. Okay. And that was what's on show and tell. All participants on the show and tell get an as seen on the show and tell sticker. Just email supportedatafruit.com and we will send you out an as seen on the show and tell sticker. If you're a kid, just have a parent guardian type entity email for you. Part of our Adafruit live series of shows, we have a few things going on. JP show is tomorrow at 4 p.m. Um, some make code arcade things. This is the first iteration. This was a remake the classic, so. Pie Hunter. Yeah, well, you, you, this is this is the first version. It's like, this is uh, Spy Hunter, it's, for whatever reason, not running. So I'll go to the next video. Okay. <laughs> Pie Hunter. Pie Hunter. Let's see. Let's see if this plays. I think this is just a blank screen, the loading screen, because it's a screen capture. But let's see what happens. I'm going to let this, I'm just going to let this run. Okay. There okay, goes. there you go. Okay. So you play a racing car, and you can uh, freeze ray, you can bump people off the screen, and you have to avoid uh, the good cars, and you have to get the bad cars. So people who played Spy Hunter, it was kind of like a racing game, but with, with enemies and friends. So it's a little bit like that. All right. And then uh, every week on JP Show, we have Make Code Minute, and this is the latest Make Code Minute. All right, take, take it, it away. away. What I want to talk about today in the Make Code Minute is using the screen width and sc uh, screen height parameters to uh, pr sort of procedurally set things in different positions on the screen. So what you'll see right here is I have a, a simple scene here and I'm going to run my simulator and you can see I've got a new sprite. It's a slice of pizza and it's going to be on these XY coordinates. Now, what if I want to put it, let's say, at the one-third uh, of the width and a uh, quarter of the height down? Inside of scene, we have these parameters, screen width and screen height. So if I uh, grab one of those and just set it in here, it's going to go all the way to the right, because the, that number, that value, uh, is 160. So the center of this sprite just landed there. Um, but if I get a little fancy and use some uh, math blocks, I can say, how about set the width to whatever the screen width is, or sorry, the X position to whatever the screen width is divided by three. And now we'll be one third across the screen. Now check it out where I've fleshed this out a bit more. And now I have a scene where you'll see again, if I zoom in, uh, I've got a variable called width segment, and I'm setting that to that screen width parameter. And I'm dividing by a number of columns, which is another variable I've put in here. So right now I've got it to five columns and four rows. So look what happens. Now when I use my arrow keys, I'm just changing the variable of which of those uh, sort of column segments or row segments I'm on. Uh, I even made it a little fancy. If I press a button, press the A key, I can see a little background that's related to the current width and height segments. Or if I chop it up more, I did not have to go in there and figure out the math, or rather the, the exact coordinates kind of laboriously. Instead, I'm using a nice little procedural formula to decide where I am on the screen. And so that is how you can use the screen width and screen height parameters to place objects inside of Make Code Arcade. Okay, so all that and more tomorrow. And I kind of feel like if you want to get a front row seat to the latest, um, easiest, low cost way to make retro arcade games, watch JP's workshop every And we've day. had like a couple months now of Make Code Minutes and like yeah. each one teaches these essential gaming skills, little bite sized packets of information. So you put them together and you can learn some pretty advanced techniques all with drag and drop programming. And then of course you can use a simulator. You don't have to own any hardware. So you can write games right in the browser, and, and then if you like, you can, of course, download it to a handheld. Okay, another big week in the world of Python on hardware. Blinka, 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 blinka. Yeah, so just a bit of a reminder. We're counting down the days. We'll have more information soon, and we'll have lots of activities. 
8-8-2019, that is Circuit Python Day, and it'll probably just be a bunch of online activities that day and also that weekend because 8-8 happens to be a Thursday, 8-9 is Friday, and then the weekend is the 10th and 11th. Um, probably going to make some shoes. These are cool shoes. <laughs> yeah, these are Vans, and you can use the uh, but they look comfy. customizer on this, and we have all this cool blink art. So we have some, some ideas, maybe we'll do some giveaways for things in addition to electronics. Um, in our weekly newsletter, we have some fun projects. Uh, this is one from Noah and Pedro. You probably saw a lot of crank things, but this is a, a USB HID crank. So if you want to scroll or use your computer in a new and interesting way using a crank, this you is You can do that now. <laughs> Big ink on the uh, virtual link, digital link, yeah. on Nordic's blog. Adafruit's Feather NRF 52840 Express Board and developing with CircuitPython. So um, this particular chipset, a lot of people are interested in it, a lot of people are buying it. Um, we've been selling a ton of these boards. Nordic has an entire write-up on this board, how to use CircuitPython, a little bit about Feather, a little bit about Adafruit, a little bit about everything. Check it out, it's on their blog. Okay, uh, some updates to CircuitPython.org. Yep. Uh, hug report to, to Justin and team. This uh, download section is now like a million times faster. I know. Because the we have these beautiful photos, and yeah. now we have um, specific versions mm. for depending on what size yep. you're viewing it. And we also last week added the um, Blinka page for the Linux Yeah, as you well. can go to, it's it's a it's an item up there now. It's after library slash Blinka. Yep. And we're adding more Linux boards all the time. Constantly. Um, this one, since you, you hang out in Give, GitHub all the time, um, when you look at Adafruit-Blinka, you can see a dependency graph now. This is a new thing, yeah. 267 repositories and 130 packages right. so use we, Blinka. Because we have, um, because Blinka is a P P Python library and you can have requirements.txt, I think that's how it does it. Um, GitHub, I guess, has an, it can look into, it's introspective into people's repositories and it sees what, um, projects out there are people building that use this library through the, the dependency, the requirements.txt file, or setup.py or whatever. And it looked like there was about 200, oh, do you want to go back, sorry. Yeah, there is uh, 267. 267, and some of them are ours. Um, but um, you can see like CircuitPython DS3502 uh, and RGB LED. But then also like home assisted or EE49 SP 2019. So that's somebody's, you know, uh, somebody's class somebody's taking or Halicrafter, maybe some sort of, I don't know, actually, or m mobile NV terms, Python, maybe environmental sensing. Um, so it's interesting to see what, you know, as we release more libraries in CircuitPython libraries, um, one of the things that's really cool about uh, GitHub and Python, it's really easy to see what people are using. This is a lot tougher in Arduino, something that we've been trying to get more information about, but you can at least do it in Python. Yeah. So if you have uh, Python libraries, uh, check out the dependency graph. I don't know if it's a beta thing. Actually, you know, today also you can like link, you like it'll, it'll do automatic linking between functions. It has like a docsgeny type thing going on built in. Um, so GitHub is adding a lot more functionality. I'm, I'm a believer in Microsoft's GitHub you know what? There was a, works. There, there some people that- There was a visitor here um, and they worked for another not, it was not Microsoft. They didn't work for Microsoft. Yeah. Another large tech company. And uh, we were talking about GitHub and like acquisitions and all sorts of things. And the thing I said, I, I think GitHub being acquired from Microsoft is going to be bigger than as, as for a company and even for like programming and yeah. just for lots of things. Bigger than when YouTube was acquired by Google. I think it's that big of a deal because like everything's yeah. code. Also, another thing that makes sense, like Microsoft has always done like document sharing collaboration with like Excel yeah. and Docs. This is really smart. This is like the this is like the online Word doc of coding. This is like, this is people working together on stuff. If you're working on a spreadsheet, you use you know an online Google Sheet, or you use Excel online. But if you're writing code, this is the only way to share and use code online. And they're doing a really yeah. good job. I am impressed. I was okay. not paid to say that too. I actually just I really believe it. This is from. Timmy makes things celebrate Pride Month with this cool rainbow project. Yeah, with the Neopixels. Neopixels are great for Pride. Yep. We have a uh, this project. I'm, I want to run it on the updated uh, UF2 that we have. This is a fractal uh, viewer, and you can do Mendelbrot and Burning Ship fractals. And it's on GitHub, 
and it's in our customer support form, so you can see what some of the people. Kind of, what's this burning this. ship? Yeah, Mandelbrot. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Okay, um, shoes. These are Circuit Python shoes. This is uh, Sean posted up. This was the the student project, their last day, and you know, and back in the day we did. Um, light up shoes, but now because you can use Circuit Python, the students made a Circuit Python version. Yeah, you can see the Circuit Playground kind of bolted to the back there. Yep. Okay. Uh, more Pi Portal projects. This uses wet Open Weather Map, and this is um, the weather in Japan. SNEC 1.0 was released. Um, this is really neat. It's a Python inspired language, it's a subset of Python. And but it runs on like an Arduino Uno. Yeah, and uh, Keith, who uh, is the lead developer on this, um, it has uh, three three bullet points that are important to remember. So Python inspired, so good if you want to learn Python. Small runs on our original Arduino um, board with 32k of ROM and 2k of RAM. It's smaller than the Apollo, Apollo guidance computer, and it's free software. It's uh, GNU. Yay. Version three or later, and there's ports: uh, Adafruit Cricket, Cricket, Arduino. Uh, Feather M0 Express, Itsy Bitsy, both three and five versions, Itsy Bitsy M0 Express, Arduino Mega, Adafruit Metro M0, and Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. What I think is fascinating is it's like, you know, I know that people who are like, oh, you know, I'm a Circuit Playground Classic or I have a low cost nano and I want to program it in Python and, you know, Circuit Python and MicroPython don't run on something that small, but SNEC does. Yeah. And so this is very interesting to us for an alternative for people we want to be able to point people to if they're like, hey, you know, they want to, uh, yeah, especially if you have like Python. a bunch of old Arduinos around, but you still are like, I really want to get. Or you, Python yeah, or like you, you know, maybe you don't want to buy all new equipment for your school, but you still yeah. want to explore Python. And that is the Circuit Python Python on Hardware news for this week. Sweet. Okay. Time travel. Snake, 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 snake. So this this week's uh, and and why I compressed some of the segments this week is because we we told folks on Twitter and social media that we would uh, talk about maker media ceasing operations and uh, the news is it's not bankrupt it's going through a process where the assets are getting sold so it's not like some times when you hear like oh you know radio shack is bankrupt you know we, that that was a thing that happened it was yeah. like it's over it has to go into um, a holding company and someone has to buy it. there's a lot of work to to be done with it right now um, Maker Media, which puts on Maker Fair and, of course, Make Magazine, is not bankrupt. They're just saying we're laying off staff. No this staff is like pre-bank. They're like it was before the bankruptcy. Yeah. It's like hey, we have to stop, drop, reorganize, figure out how we want to move forward. So a lot of folks were asking us like, what does this mean for Make? What does this mean for uh, Maker Fair? Um, does this affect any companies that you know? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So uh, what I thought we would do is uh, I have what's well, time travel. I have time travel photos. So I've been uh, I've been in it from the start when I was at Make. So I was senior editor at Make before it was called Make. So I was uh, I retired from doing Hackaday because like it was fun, but I'm just like okay, like did it, and that can just kind of run forever. Yeah. Turns out it still is. So there's Hackaday, there's Supercon, there's Hackaday IO, there's all these things. It changed hand once, and now it's owned by Supply Frame. Mm -hmm. So Hackaday is uh, uh, a thriving business. They've had a store. They have lots of things. So I had um, just retired from Hackaday when I thought it was going to just be able to, to run on its own. Um, there was easily enough projects to cover all the time. And Rael, who was the CTO of O'Reilly, said, hey, Dale wants to talk to you. Um, they, they might do some type of like... DIY publication or some t something. Yeah. And I was still senior editor at Popular Science at the time. And I said, okay, like you know, the Popular Science stuff has been um, pretty pretty fun. I don't like doing print stuff, and I and events I'm not really into, but like online digitally stuff, um, I think that would be kind of cool. So um, make had a Maker Fair. A lot of people like I I went through my Flickr that has you know about almost 20 years of photos now so during that time period there's there's a few things um, one we had a maker fair but it wasn't it was before the first maker fair back in 2005 there i think it was at e-tech and that was an o'reilly conference there was meet oh, the makers that's right and i, I was and, there yeah. with bunny and he shut off the chumby the first chumby yeah there was the first chumby and this is before there was even like we're getting ready to launch the magazine so the magazine was announced in november and then january it, it launched and 
this was one of the first things. So this is, I have a collection of all these posters. This was Bunny. He was showing off all his homebrew stuff, his uh, Chumby, uh, which is sort of like the Pi Portal now. It's yeah. kind of interesting. Um, so then about a year later, um, and this was, the first Maker Fair was in 2006. Yeah. Here we go. Meet the makers. And this was when Make was part of O'Reilly. And O'Reilly is a book publisher. So um, I thought I'd just show some photos and talk about some of the things. Um, th instead of like pontificating, because here's one thing that's not fun. Yeah. Is when people are, you know, there, there's like armchair business. Armchair experts. Like, let me tell you how I would run it. It's like, well, like, you've never run a business, you've never hired people, you've never worked an event. You have no idea and what that costs. And everyone really should are. have opinions. It's cool. But, like, you know, these are real people that lost their jobs recently. There's also these events that people want to carry on. Um, there's a there's so much stuff going on in the in the maker movement. One magazine or one thing, just like Radio Shack going out of business, didn't really change stuff for a lot of companies. But it is important. One, like what worked in the past, and and two, like what do, what can we do going forward? So the um, the photos that I have was right before uh, we launched the magazine and then also Maker Fair. Yeah. So here I am. Uh, this was in 2004. Five, I was about to go on Science Friday, and I had the first issue of Make, and we were talking about like Maker Fair and stuff like that. Um, I was working on real-time projects on the Make blog, and this is a spot watch from Microsoft, and I made an <laughs> RSS reader that would text from the Make site onto anyone's watch that had a, a Microsoft spot watch. Kind of very cool. forward-thinking, but didn't quite. Yeah. So this is 2005. And I thought that was kind of cool. So I would document all these like digital projects. I, but before this, I was doing um, the Engadget How to Tuesday, and that's what turned into Hackaday. Yeah, you and did then, Watch Watch Wednesday or whatever. Yeah, Watch This Wednesday, and and that's what's one of the things. But one of the things I had told Dale when he said, "Oh, like, we're going to do a magazine, we're going to do like all this stuff," and I'm like, "Magazine's a terrible idea." I still kind of think a print magazine is kind of tough to pull off. Mm -hmm. But I said, well, I really want to do the digital stuff, the online stuff, and I think, you know, online videos are going to kind of be a big deal. Don't think even YouTube was acquired by Google yet. Yeah. So, like, a lot of the videos we did were on Blip TV and some other places. So um, here's the first box of uh, the Maker Fair badges. <laughs> this was, uh, I had to unpack them. Uh, there's 350 of them. This was... Uh, we weren't really prepared for how many people were going to show up at the first Maker Fair. It so, was very small. Yeah, it, uh, it was like two two small buildings. Yeah, so there was there was a lot going on, um, and we were uh, kind of caught off guard because there were so many people that showed up. I had some of the I took photos of all the original branding, Mikey postcards. Yeah, who, who does stuff with us? Yeah, we still work with a lot of these these folks. So again, this was fourteen years ago, ish. Yep, Swaparama Rama, which yeah. is by uh, Wendy. Yeah, and then here is uh, Brie Pettis and me. And this is, uh, we were running some booths at the Maker Fair. And uh, here we are in our lab coats. Brie was a school teacher in Seattle, and uh, I saw some videos that he did, and I hired him to work at Make for me. And then, of course, he went on to eventually uh, do MakerBot. Um, but Make was a little bit different, and this is like kind of the story that I'm, I'm telling through photos. When we started Make There Was Hardware, when we were doing lots of uh, outreach, there wasn't DIY hardware for the makers. So it was like, hey, get excited about this new trend coming up, but, it what, didn't can, exist. but yeah. what can I do? And it's like, well, this is um, one of the first, if not the first, open this source hardware. Daisy. Yeah. This is a Daisy MP3. This is from Raphael, and, and we made a kit together, and this is the, the make it, makezine.com um, open source MP3 player. Yep with a pick and then it has an mp3 decoder chip because it was still under patent yeah. and the sd card so that that was important to me and this is the things that i really like working on this there was a make controller there was the game of life there was a daisy mp3 there was the uh joe gran badge yeah the simon badge and, he did for his workshops and that's what i spent a lot of my time on um i split my time between being the senior editor of the the magazine uh, helping to run the Maker Store. It was called Maker Store at first. Um, trying to get sponsors, advertisers, and more for uh, the different events and for also online. And then also starting a lot of 
videos. I thought I thought videos were, were where yeah. it's at. And the control kit was kind of cool. You know, if it had been in Python, it would have been so revolutionary. Like, we weren't, we didn't have the technology yet. Not yet. But the, it was too hard to program. Yeah. And then later on, Arduino came out. Yeah. Um, Makershed was the next iteration. And uh, for a very long time, Makershed was bigger than Adafruit. It was. Um, I knew you, and I was still full-time at Make. But I would help you out with stuff, and, and Make was a, a, a much bigger uh, yes. company and entity. Um, I was just selling kits out of the, my room still. Yeah. And one of the, 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 the beats that I was on was open source hardware. And I, and I think that that's where I saw the most potential for what I thought was this like hardware and engineering movement, which was part of this thing called Make. Yeah, you would do the, the gift guide. It was yeah. possible to actually list all open source oh, hardware. Yeah. And there was open, only like 20. <laughs> open source hardware 2009. So that was 10 years ago. And things that were called open source hardware or open source hardware license, there was only a few. But eventually it was too hard to keep track of. But in the beginning, there was like a handful. There was less than a dozen. Yeah, there's the, open source the, hardware. there was the rep wrap. You can see in the original maker bought Cupcake, which was just a kit. Yeah. I had a couple projects. There was open prosthetics. But it was very rare. And not a lot of people, there was some projects from EMSL. Yeah. Not a lot, though. And uh, one of the things, and I, and I still think this is true, um, Halloween is a celebration of people who make things. So one of my favorite issues of Make, I got all, got a chance to work on it. There was a there was a other version of this cover where I was in it, where they're like, okay, Phil, like, hang out with all this. But we we had the biggest Halloween contest going on for a while, and I think that's where if if people are going to purchase Make as a print publication or even a, an event. I think Halloween should have a, a, a big role in it. Yeah. Because that's where cosplay is. That's where that's where a lot of stuff that we see there's now. There's candy. Kids love it. Yeah. So the other thing was there was like tech channels. So this is G4 Tech TV. No, um, I was on G4 Tech TV. Yeah, I used to go on this um, every single, every time before Maker Faire, I would go on G4 Tech TV. Here's what Maker Faire is. Here's all the stuff. And then um, I had started the Make podcast. I uh after the Engadget podcast. Yeah. So Engadget podcast I had started, and I was like, I really like doing these um, audio interviews with technologists, and the Make podcast had a lot of that. So in addition to showing how to make the content for podcasts, um, you could like hack your iPad. Yeah. Or, or, sorry, your iPod, put Linux and on. And then what's funny is I use these all for testing the Minty Boost. Yeah, and then we would use these <laughs> to test the Minty Boost. But one of the things that was important is all these maker stories and the, all the different ways you could publish besides print. Again, well, the people are just amazing. I mean, everyone who's in the making community for the last, you know, 15 years or whatnot, they're all, they're all just, like, amazing, generous, wonderful, creative people. Every one of them. And this is what I'm still excited about. I would like to see this return in some way. So this was some screenshots. I would take a screenshot of iTunes, and we really pushed the boundaries of what was possible with podcast on iTunes. So when you would download or subscribe to a Make Podcast, you got the video. Here's a weekend project with Bree. You got a full PDF because it allowed attachments and enclosures. It's a cool RSS thing. Yeah. And you would be able to get parts of the magazine delivered to you. Imagine now if you were... I know, like even now, like it's not as good as that. Well, it's it's actually know, backtracked. Yeah, and, and I kind of want to weave in some, some ideas with this. If you're going to run a magazine like Make, it, you have to have a digital output in a big way. You have to have podcasts, interview makers. You have to have videos. You have to have parts of this magazine. Maybe some people might not even touch a print version. Maybe they're only going to live in their podcatcher or their phones or tablets. So this was uh, just, again, some screenshots. This is from 2007. Six. Yeah, seven. Uh, and this was the multimeter one. Multimedia tutorial, make video podcast. You get all this stuff. So you're listening it. to it. You're watching it. Yeah. You've got text that goes with it you could do chapters in long form audio or video and this is how the old ipod used to display it uh this was in 2005 and 6 you can like zoom in on this later when this is on youtube but uh i made a uh, interactive chat bot so you could ask it what you what what you want to build um, you could subscribe to the Make News on this. This is all over so Instant you're Messenger. Like, you're like, oh, hey, you know, what's an iPod hacking project? Yeah, you would say what you had and it would return well, this projects. Is, you you know, Twitter didn't exist yet. There was no Twitter. There was no Twitter. <laughs> yeah, where it was a very basic form of Twitter. Next up, here you are. And you have a uh, Christmas tree kit because you had said, and you still say to this day, you, will, you promise you will never sell a Christmas tree kit. Correct. And so there you are. 
That's right. This is me. Here was your Maker Faire booth. You had a wave bubble. That's right. I still have that shirt, too. You had your Zox box. Yeah, I don't do projects. You could build some of them. You could buy some of them with the dig button. Yeah. Here is my friend Natalie Z. So I worked with Natalie back when I was in the advertising world. Uh, we worked at separate companies, um, but we usually ended up competing for clients and such, but we were friends. And when she was finished with that, uh, Make started a magazine called Craft. So for a brief period of time, there was another night. One was called Make, one was called Craft. Make scene, craft scene. So this is Natalie at, uh, I think this was maybe Austin Maker Fair. It could have been uh, Bay Area Maker Fair back in like 2000. And, Eight or so. This is Dale and this is Jerry. I think they were getting the uh, Austin the, proclamation. Yeah, I think this was like it's it, it's uh, the day of making. Day of making, and I think this was in Austin. Yeah. Um, here's Spark Funds booth at the Austin Maker Fair. Yeah, they had big uh, soldering workshops. Always incredibly popular. Super packed. Yeah. People love the how to solder workshops. And uh, back in 2009, I, I had a behind the scenes role on Make Television. If you looked, there's a very young version of JP. He looks the same, though, man. <laughs> By young whatever version, they, I mean identical. Whatever they have in L.A. Waters. So, uh, Make had a television show. It was uh, public television. And uh, Make was also on the Martha Stewart show. So pastel. Make was also on the Colbert Report. And I remember we went to that in the Here I spot. am with Colbert. <laughs> And uh, you and I were helping out uh, to make sure all the, yeah. the, the make stuff worked. I was, uh, I was called in last minute to solder up a couple yeah. things to get them back working. Here's another blast from the past. So uh, we had we had an office in make. Here's me. Here's Mark DeVink. And there's Colin. Colin so much hair. Colin, Colin uh, works at Adford. Still weird. Yeah. Keeping it weird. Make out a uh, fire truck for a while. And IBM helped sponsor it. And then I kind of wanted to just wrap up um, kind of what you were saying. You know, the, the connections that, that we all made and the people that we met, that's what this community is. So uh, this is you and I. This is Caleb Kraft. So Caleb uh, worked at Hackaday, and then he went on to make. Yes. And this is, what, four or five years ago? Yeah. Becky, um, I hired her when she was at school, and she came to work at Make. Yes, this and is then, New York Maker Faire. And then um, she came to work at Adafruit. Now she's in Instructables. Here you are at the DigiKey booth. This was 2017 with the Giant Circuit Playground Express. Yes, this is a recent. Yep. Here are the Arduino booth. This is a year ago. And then, you know, I just I just have gigs and gigs and gigs of content. There's you and Sean Heimel. So what happens next? Who knows? But the things about Make that will carry on, whether Make has a purchaser or if it gets relaunched or whatever, it's going to be the people, and I think that's the thing to center on. So um, we did a blog post, and uh, so far we have tried twice to purchase some assets from Make. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any big announcements tonight or anything. But this no. in 2017, Make had a, a bit of a cash crunch, and we said, "Hey, like here's some here's if if you want, we can take over some of the, some of the things that we think that we could do a good job with, and we could give you money." Um, turns out they didn't need it. And then most recently, um, we wanted to see if there was something. We also made an offer for um, something a little unusual. Dale's head? No, what? <laughs> so we made an offer for um, all the email addresses that make collected over the years and all the physical addresses. What are we going to do with them? Well, w uh, we would work with a third-party data destruction service to verify they've been destroyed, erased, cannot be used to spam. Um, I this think happened with Radio Shack. It, this happens kind of all the time with all companies. They sold the, they were like, oh, and we won't use it. But then when it was sold, the, it was sold to another I, company. And I, they used I know it. this is kind of valuable, but it, it's really not. It, it'll, it'll, I think because it's Make and Make was built around a community, I think it would be better not to buy the mailing list and the physical address and then spamming folks. I think whatever you do, I don't think that would be a good idea. I mean, I think the community, if you want people in the maker community to buy stuff from you, just do what Make did, do really cool projects, publish, do podcasts, do videos, share it. Just sending people email isn't going to um, get the maker community to want to contribute or purchase from your company. I think that yeah. I think the thing is to be part of a, being a good citizen and a good maker and a good part of the community. I mean, like, 
the making Meet and Greet is a community. It isn't just like an audience. Yeah, it is like everyone knows everybody. And it's and it's grown to the point where there's lots of large groups doing lots of different things. So all of the things that you you do like engineering and 3D printing, 3D printing, accessibility it's, tech. It's outgrown one thing called Make. Yes. There's a giant 3D printing room. There's, there's a cosplay world. There, yeah, and there's so there's a Circuit Python world. And so I feel like whoever whoever comes along, uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll hear back and and we'll be able to purchase to destroy the mailing list and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I think that would just that would that would make sure that if if you ever went to a maker fair, that information isn't going to go to some somewhere or something else. That that's the expectation. Like yeah. They're not going to get spammed or anything like that. So, anyways. Um, that's a little bit of a, 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 a walk down memory lane. Yep. And so we'll see what happens next. That was time travel. That was that, cool. that was a big time travel. That was a big time travel. And, uh, you know, I'll probably post up all the photos at some point from, like, let's see, I was there. Are they in Flickr? 2000, no? They're in my private Flickr album of, like, make from 2005 to, like, 2009-ish or so. Um, that's what, what like, I, I knew I, I should document everything that was going on. Yeah. You have, like, photos, like, Make wasn't called Make at first, and, like, Maker Fair was really small, and just, like, a lot of the Maker Shed, it wasn't called Maker Shed, like, a lot of, like, where what happened um, in the beginning, I tried to document the best I could. Um, but anyways, that's, that's, the, that's the time travel stuff. At the end of the show, if anyone has any questions about Make, uh, about business, about anything, I can, yeah. I can answer it based on what we do here at Adafruit and what I did. Put them in Discord. Was, put them in Discord, and we'll, we'll get through them, because a lot of... A lot of people contact us, a, a magazine publisher contacted us and said, we want to buy it, will you and Lamore run it? And it's like, that's a huge distraction. Why don't you all do it? And we wouldn't even do it, like, it's not something that we're we already, at. We, already we're already we already publish guides and videos, and we have products. Yeah. But I also think that the, 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 the idea of having how to make something and then the things that you need to make it close to each other so people can buy them or share them or get the resources I think that's really powerful and I've, I've not seen I've not seen anyone pull it off as good as Adafruit right now so the learn system is a lot of the things that I wanted to do I make but whether it was technology or just you know business needs I really thought online was the place to be videos were the way to display it and you should only be you know millimeters away from a button to add something to your cart so when you see that thing you want to get you can purchase it and it also gets you away from the sales cycle of okay i need a million something dollars from a sponsor for an event or yeah. like a print publication it's you know the metrics for print are a little bit different than online I, I i like the like here's the number of people who clicked the thing and bought the thing versus like well like you know it's a you know it's a little bit murkier for for print stuff also events depending on how an event is done some people want a badge scan some you know some marketers require something a little bit different than maybe the maker fair county fair thing where you're not there really to get monetized and then also lots of companies like google's a good example they do a google science fair so it's very make like in its own way yeah so we'll see and there's also many maker fairs there's maker fairs fair. that people are going to carry on around the world um let's see maker shed they used to stock our stuff they stopped stocking stuff like five or six years ago so it's not like we have a well they moved away from that and they actually were like we don't like shipping goods they, yeah they focus more on books i i think so i also say this i think it was really hard for Maker Shed, especially after some staff changes, to keep up with the latest. I think that was like one of the hardest. You things. do have to. There's you a reason be, why we do new products every week, and we always have new products. Yeah. Like we're discontinuing as many items as we're putting in. Like the number yeah. of items in the Adafruit store is kind of staying static. New business is the business. But, like we yeah. we really like to have new products because technology is moving so fast. I think you really need to curate and have a firm opinion about what's the best possible thing. And you have to keep up with it, on a, on a, you know, hourly basis, second by second basis. You know, tonight I know you're going to be falling asleep reading data sheets. That's that's a fact. So it's, I think all those things it's together. True. I think all those things together. So yeah. we'll see. Um, we're probably going to end up talking to some folks that said they were they're they're thinking about doing something with me. Yeah. But I also think like there's hack space. There's there's a ton of things out there. It doesn't mean you have to do the same thing over and over, like. You know, there's nothing, there's uh, new things like to be a, done. Adafruit is very different than Make, but I, but for me personally, there's a lot of stuff I really wanted to get done at Make that I couldn't that I that I can do now. So like, that that's the way I would I would, or that's what I'll ask people who are like, oh, okay, I want to buy this event and this magazine, and be like, well, what is the business problem 
that you have that this that a print magazine and an event solves because yeah. there are some business needs yes. and business problems that that solves but not always true okay so that's the uh, okay well that was your time travel yeah it was a big one How well folks me? are asking I'm just like well I'll just watch it on the, the show this week okay open source hardware we're an open source hardware company lady, yes you know? right we got yeah. almost 1900 guides we have 1887 guides uh what's Ooh. on the big board this week well yeah. i'm glad you asked we have a bunch of guides that came out this week actually like like 11 guides so we've got um two arcada guides we have the nes emulator for arcada um this one is going to be popular for uh those who like playing classic nintendo games um i sort of ported two or three different ports of nofrendo which is a really good nes emulator to the same 51 so if you have a pie badge or pie gamer you can now play nes games and you can even save game state and you can uh, restore it and you can you know pause and uh, and it runs at full speed um you can run up to 256k roms um i spent six weekends on it so please use it <laughs> because i put a lot of time into it that i didn't do other things with i could have gone outside but i was working on this so try it out. Um, we have uh, a bunch of, uh, also some links to some really cool homebrew ROMs. Um, so if you don't want to pirate ROMs, you don't have to. There's um, a really amazing Nintendo uh, homebrew scene um, with some really fun games. Some of which are better than some NES games. Um, we have Pixel Dust, this digital sand demo for Arcada. So uh, we'll show a little video of that shortly. Um, but that's uh, Phil B with this really cool sand simulation code and we did it for LED matrices on Raspberry Pi and I ported that code back to um, Arduino and to the TFT screen so you can have a little uh, pixelated sand. I was inspired by I saw 3 duplet took our code and put it on their handheld and I was like wait a minute that's a good idea so then I put it back on our handheld yeah, so I had a little, everyone's got I showed the video last week but this one is. yeah so now I have a guide with some code and there's a few different examples and I kind of go through and how you can customize it to however you like all right, next up, we've got, we make the classics Pie Hunter. We showed you that video. So this is um, taking inspiration from um, famous arcade games and how to recreate those games in Make Code Arcade uh, and learn skills. Um, that's kind of the, the first part of before you, you know, you can create your own original games. Oftentimes it's best to recreate existing ones because you'll learn all these tips and tricks from like 20 years, 30 years of game uh, history that we have. We have a guide for uh, the Bri uh, Brian wrote for the LPS 35HW, so the water resistant pressure sensor, which is kind of interesting. It has temperature and pressure, but it's um, in a sealed sensor so that if you want to um, build a project that's in a wearable or maybe it goes outside, this is a really uh, good option because um, it's designed for outdoor use. Uh, we've got um, Three projects are kind of like two projects, but like split and mixed into three. There's the Pi Gamer 3D printed snap fit case. If you have a Pi Gamer, you want a 3D print case instead of the um, acrylic case. This case is nice and slim. It snap fits together. And of course you can customize the colors. They also made a version of that Pi Gamer case, but has space for a rotary encoder and a crank. So you can make crank, cranky games. And we have um, a uh, project that we post. It's actually a variant I have an old guide you can link to it that is linked from that guide for making a gift player that um, when you turn the crank it fast forwards and replays the gift. So you can see that here. So this is a nice little demo just showing how to use the crank. HAD crank controller also kind of interesting taking you know what they learned from those two projects and like well let's just make a handheld uh, crank so you can uh, interface it with HID so it's just circuit python. Um, from Colin, we've got a quick start guide for Circuit Python and Circuit Playground. If you got one and you want a quick start guide, just the fastest getting started guide. You know, there's always more detail you can get into, but this is just to get you going. Uh, Colin uh, is really good at making succinct guides. Check that out. Uh, Dan C has been just doing some amazing e ink projects. Um, he came to us and said, Hey, I love e ink. And I'm like, We've got this new e ink shield. We've got this new Metro Airlift. We want to do like a weather project. So. He uh, adapted um, open weather code, I think, from Daniel Eichhorn's um, variant for ESP32. But then he kind of adapted that back to the SAMD51 airlift. And uh, you can use a shield with it. You pop it on top. It's a no solder project. If you want to make a quick Wi-Fi e-paper e-ink display, um, this guide will get you going. Uh, we have an energy budgets guide by Mike Stone. Uh, Mike Stone, what's interesting is as we're reviewing this guide, he is really good at 
like we have a lot of very beginner projects, like how to use an LED, and we have some really advanced projects. Like here's how to, you know, 3D print this like amazing, uh, you know, sword and motorize it, and it's a chainsaw, or whatever. And we have a lot of like very complicated projects, a lot of very basic projects. This is kind of the the reference information in the middle. It's like how do you know what size battery to pick? And it's kind of like I always tell people like, well, you can do a bunch of math, but like honestly, just like plug in a battery and see how long it lasts, and then you know you you can divide out and figure out how how much power is using but my actually goes into the details of how you calculate your energy budget and how you can make your batteries last longer using buck converters versus linear converters um, what is a watt hour um, how to you know how PWM affects battery and power usage um, check it out it's very detailed he's a really skilled uh, engineer at explaining these kinds of details um, so this is a really uh, great resource uh, these guides uh, people refer to them again and again as they progress in their project. And then uh, Katni did a little guide for the MCP 9600. It's a cute I2C thermocouple amplifier. We have some Arduino code and wiring diagrams for that. Okay. Moving along. That's a lot. We're almost up 2000. Okay, so main New York City factory footage. Here we go. Take it away. Okay, and it wouldn't be a main New York City factory footage segment without a sunset or sunrise. We saw this yesterday. It was amazing. It was yeah, a beautiful it was a nice sunset. Out. Yeah. 
Alrighty. Now, you've seen some of the previews. You've watched some of the show and tell. But you've, looked at the, you've looked at the feeds, the tweets. But here is the crank video. Cranky gifts. And then we're going to do a 3D printed iris speed up. Okay. We'll do them back to back. Take it away. Okie dokie. Don't forget, code is GPS USB. Okay. And uh, we're gonna do this. Okay. Okay, so uh, two things real quick. We have, have less than 20 boxes. Yeah, so if you're thinking about getting an box, we're shipping them this week, next week, week after. Um, Lots of good guesses, probably, of what Adabox 12 is. However, I can tell you they're about to be gone. This is it. You should get one. Adabox. How will you know if your guess is right? Yeah. You should subscribe. This is it, but we're, we're out of the thousands and thousands and thousands that we ship out, we only have probably and 20 left right now. Yeah, about okay. 20. Okay. Okay, starting off, we got these in stock finally. Yay, it's been a year in the making, but we now have Circuit Playground Expresses in beautiful... Uh, 4H green, and on the back we've got the 4H logo, which is not a trademark. It's a special 18 USC so 707. Yeah, so it's one of the same type of marks that the government can give you approval for, much like Woodsy the Owl or Smokey the Bear or like the Olympic rings. There's these all the there or like Boy Scouts, Scouts, the name Scouts. Yeah. There's things that the, the the U.S. government decided. Let's not have it as regular trademark. 
let's make this super thing. And we had to apply for it, and um, it, it happened. So it's Check here. it out. Yeah, I'll show it off. It's beautiful. So the final one has uh, gold pads, so it doesn't oxidize. It's exactly the same code and layout as a normal Circuit Playground Express. It's got the microphone, speaker, switches, buttons, sensors, LEDs. I think it's see on the back. Uh, it just has the FCC CE marking and yep. the 4 H marking logo. Um, of course, you don't have to use this for your Circuit Playground projects, but if you are in 4-H, wouldn't it be cool um, to make your next agricultural technology technology agricultural technology project with a green 4-H Circuit Playground board? And uh, we'll soon have um, some of these boards in the 4-H shop as well. So that's pretty exciting. And yep. then we'll do some projects with 4-H. Uh, so as you get maybe this summer, if you and your group of 4-H people in your community want to build soil sensors or activity monitors, um, capacitive touch or uh, environmental sensing, you can do that with Circuit Playground Express. Next up, we've got the Great Fit one from Great Scott Gadgets. I love uh, this open source company. They're just so fun and so cool. Of course, it's open source hardware. It even has the marking on the back. It says, uh, be neighborly. And it's kind of this interesting thing. It's got this LPC 4300 on it. This is this mega Cortex M4. So it even has, I think, a Cortex M0 as well. And it's got two USB ports. And it can do one host and um, one peripheral. And so it's actually kind of like an in-betweener. Like, of course, you can use it as a normal breakout board. And it's got all of these um, pins available uh, that you can program in. I think probably has embed support. And of course, it has uh, you know GCC support. But also, it acts as an in-between. So if you want to have a uh, reverse engineering USB or you want to like, um, you know, take data from USB and analyze it. This could be a really good tool because again, it has both the USB client and host capabilities. Um, so we've got these gadgets installed. I think, you know, this is for like kind of reverse engineering with hardware. If you're, if you're into that, um, you're going to be into this. Their boards are always so wonderful. I just got a shout out to like Great Scott <laughs> and Travis okay. Goodspeed and uh, that whole crew. Okay. Everything yeah, they really do is... Red. It's so awesome, and it's a beautiful board too. White. It's hard to make white PCBs look good, yeah. Um, and they do. So there you go. Really lovely. Nice work on this design. Beautiful board. Okay. It's a great for one. Great for reverse engineering, hacking, and USB stuff. We've got from Brian, who's been doing hardware engineering with us for a couple of months now. The LPS 35HW. This is a really cool sensor. It's a temperature and pressure sensor. Um, but unlike most of uh, these, it's actually designed to be used in damp environments. It's kind of got this protective epoxy around it, and inside it's also got a um, moisture barrier. So not a lot of pressure sensors can be used. It can actually be used underwater, I believe, as well, uh, although I haven't tested it underwater. We've, we've tested it in environments, and it works fine. I will note that if you want to use it underwater in a very damp environment, you'll have to epoxy the rest of the board because the sensor is water resistant, but the rest of the PCB assembly is not because we don't know what you want to use it for. So we kind of just made it inexpensive and simple. So um, use epoxy if you would like to uh, use this in a damp environment. But if you want to just evaluate this chip, um, this board is great. And here's a demo and I'll show off. It's very responsive. So here's the pressure and sensor. If I put my finger over it, you can see um, it has a very high precision and it's very accurate as well. It's a very nice sensor. This is from ST. Usually we have our temperature and barometric pressure sensors from Bosch, but ST has been coming out with some good stuff as well. So uh, nice work from them. You can use I2C or SPI um, with this device and we have both uh, CircuitPython and Arduino libraries. Okay, next up. This screen, we had a couple people who said, oh, you know, I, I broke my Pi Portal screen or my Pi TFT Plus. Can I just get the TFT? Well, we now have it. Um, I really like these displays. They're from um, DisplayWorks, which is uh, my TFT supplier, and they're great. Um, these are 50 pin uh, connector TFTs. Uh, you get uh, SPI or you get 8 bit, you, you know, 80, 80, 60, 800, 16 bit. 88 or 1600, as well as you can put it into a true yeah, V-Sync, H-Sync um, LCD mode. I haven't actually used them in that mode, but I'm, I'm sure it works in that mode um, because the chipset supports it, the ILI 9341. If you uh, break or crack the display, um, pop these in, and then you know we have a breakout in the store as well if you want to just uh, connect it up. Okay, next up. Next up, um, 
coming soon, we have the starter kit for the Pi Gamer. We're going to be putting more of these in stock this week, promise. Uh, we made some today, but uh, we've actually canceled that a little fast. Um, this starter kit has everything you need. So you get the fully assembled Pi Gamer board. You get the acrylic case here shown with the paper protective cover on it, uh, as well as the screws put together. You get um, a small 8 ohm speaker, which is nice and loud. Uh, you get uh, a 350 milliamp hour battery, so it lasts about four to seven hours, depending on how loud you play music and how bright the backlight is. And you get an assortment of uh, buttons, uh, caps, to uh, customize what colors you'd like, as well as a protective case to hold the whole thing together. And I thought I'd just show the Pi Gamer off, just to show here's what it looks like when it's fully assembled. Um, so I can show up the pieces. So you can see the PCB underneath, and you've got this kind of cool half translucent smoke acrylic. Um, the button caps, which you can customize. So we, I put the red and white ones on, but they come in a variety of colors. So you can see yellow and gray as well. Um, you got the analog joystick and the buttons, of course. Uh, micro USB, we set button, uh, stereo headset on off, SD card. Um, the feather headers are exposed, so if you want to plug in feathers, you can do that. Uh, they can make a little uh, sensor game, or you can connect a thermal camera, or Wi-Fi. I actually connected the Wi-Fi airlift, and yeah, you can do Wi-Fi stuff on the um, on the Pi Gamer. Uh, the speaker plugs in over here. The battery plugs in over here into this little cavity, and then you've got some stemma connectors on the bottom as well. And then this is running uh, the Trash Panda game. So you, if you would like to uh, make uh, make code arcade games or if you would like to uh, play the NES emulator, well, loud, uh, you can do that with this starter kit and there's no soldering required. Okay. And next to uh, the star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada and the community is this. Yay, this is the GPS USB, which I think people want. Nobody has actually asked for this. Um, but I think people want it because I see people using our Ultimate GPS, which is a really great GPS module, and they want to connect it to Linux computers and they don't want to take up a UART um, because maybe you don't have a lot of UART, so you want to use USB. So this is basically the Ultimate GPS board, and I just made it a little bit bigger, and I added uh, Scilab 2104 USB serial adapter on there, which is my favorite USB serial adapter right now. Regulator and, of course, a uh, micro USB connector, as well as the four USB pins. So if you want to like hardwire it into something, like sometimes you have like an embedded Linux board where like USB is actually just pads, you don't even have to use a cable, you can just solder the four wires together and it will enumerate. And then um, RX and TX LEDs as well as a um, uh, external antenna option. So if you plug in an antenna, it will automatically switch over to the external antenna to give you that boost. Um, other than that, it works just like the Ultimate GPS that you know and love and we've uh, shown in the, um, tutorial we've just added a couple photos and uh, shown you how to use it with Python and if you want to use the pulse per second so the GPS module of course you know it gets an NMEA data out it tells you location the time but if you want for using this as an NTP server or something <coughs> you want to get that pulse per second which will um, get you the nanosecond ish precision of when the actual seconds turn over because the data coming out of the serial is delayed by a couple milliseconds usually because it actually has to get transmitted. Um, so there is a pulse per second that comes out and it's connected to the ring indicator pin on the Scilabs chip. So if you're using Python, you can use PySerial to read the PPI, uh, the, the PPS from the ring indicator pin just by reading like, it's like PySerial.ri and it will toggle high and low based on um, the PPS signal. So that's how I got there's like one thing that basically, you know, you can't get from NMEA data. Uh, it is available, but you'll just have to use whatever serial software you're using, the interface code, to read the ring indicator pin. So that's the only thing that's a little unusual about it. Other than that, it's just a, a GPS module, Ultimate GPS. I love this module. Um, it's just really fast, uh, low power, um, especially with external antenna, you know, it works really great. It's kind of overall does everything you ever want from a USB uh, GPS device. Okay, and what's that, Lady Ada? New, 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 new. Let's do a new recap. New, 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 new. We've got well, only a few Ada boxes left. We're going to be out of these, but putting it in there. We're going to be out of there, but maybe if you're watching this one left, you can sign up. We've got the 4H Circuit Playground Express. It's just like the Circuit Playground Express you know and love, but now uh, we've partnered with 4H to brand this 4H green with the 4H logo. We've got some great Scott gadgets. 
The Great Fet One, it's the update to the Good Fet. It has an LPC 4300. It's a USB go in between goer. It's a powerful reverse engineering tool. It's kind of a Swiss Army knife of electronics, logic analyzer, whatever you want it to be. Uh, the Great Fet One will probably solve your problems. We've got this uh, water resistant temperature uh, and pressure, absolute pressure sensor. Um, this is designed to be used outdoors and in damp conditions. So uh, it's one of the few sensors we've seen that uh, is meant for outdoor use. Uh, this is a 3.2 inch, 320 by 240 display. You can use it on its own or as a replacement for our Pi Portal display or Pi TFT Plus if you happen to crack that display during use. And we've got our all-in-one starter kit for the Pi Gamer. It comes with a Pi Gamer PCB, the enclosure, battery, speaker, uh, button caps, as well as a beautiful purple carrying case. And finally, we have the GPS USB. It's the ultimate GPS with a USB micro B connector. Uh, so you don't need to use up your UART pins. You just plug in a USB cable, shows up as a serial port, and you can be reading GPS data immediately. New, 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 new. OK, let's uh, do some top secret. So first up, here's an update from our AR app. It's kind of what I was talking about before in the time travel section. I think you have to participate in some of these new bits of technology to make sure um, that not only can you use these things, but you understand how they work. So this is our AR app for um, our Adafruit products. It could see what product is in front of you. Yeah. And those little blue dots are on the screen. And when you tap those, that's what's, that's what's displaying. So it's an augmented reality app and it, can recognize uh, the exact hardware that you have, and then it tells you all the different pieces. So it's a learning tool, but it's also a very cool use of technology that some of the new phones and tablets can do. Very neat. Next up. Coming soon, got the first draft of Circuit Playground Blue Fruit Edition coming out. This is some lovely draft silk screen. This may be changing, but this is kind of what we're starting with. Yes. All right. Back in the vault. All right, so we're going to answer questions now. We're yeah. going to do that in Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. Um, this is where you go. I have go a there. favor to ask folks. We have four of these little gems, and once we get to 10, we can put a graphic, and I think we get other stuff for our server. If you have server boosts and you're in Discord, can you boost us until we get to 10? We need like six of you. Thank you. It's just like another thing I gotta collect, but like. But we'll be, we'll do cool stuff with it. Well, promise. Yeah, well, we'll put. I'll put cool graphics and like coming soon stuff and top secret. I'll use that for the banner. So that's our that's our request. Well, let's see mm -hmm. what questions we have. Okay. Okay. Um, this was an uh, earlier one. Um, what's the most important thing for running a business, aka something like make? So. I don't think there is one specific thing because you have to be careful. This is like a business book. There's no like, oh, that's the secret. It's all about people. It's all about your customer. It's all about this. I will say this. This is not the most important thing, but you can't really be successful unless you have it, which is a dedication to measuring things. And I think that's the difference between successful companies that I've seen, that you've seen, that we've seen, and the companies that aren't. If you're Taking in subscribers, how many subscribers did you get this month versus last month? How many did you get this month versus last month last year? This quarter versus last quarter? Which direction is it going? How much is the cost per acquisition mm -hmm. per person? Um, are you adding more things into the store? What's the profit margins on it? And you have to send that information out to everybody. I know a lot of companies don't do that. So we have something called State of the Fruit every week. And State of the Fruit, um, each team, briefly talk so we wrap up state of the fruit in less, 25 than, minutes. less than 20 minutes often. yeah and there's pizza and drinks and it's uh whoever is here at the company at uh same time every friday and what we do is we just go over the numbers what's the on-time ship shipping percentage what is our um rate for cycle count so we don't have to do inventory day every every year and it's one of the things that the teams came up with and we always try to improve these metrics and we're always trying to work towards a goal and I think everyone in the company having access to this and seeing this has really helped us. Yeah. There's no surprises. And you're always measuring something and, and there's a lot of people that are like, hey, how do we make this number go up? Or how do we reduce the number of uh, customer support inquiries? Or yeah. how do we do this? Or how do we do that? Um, we have 
metrics on returns. We have metrics on um, fraud attempts. Um, we have QA metrics. Yeah. We've got fab metrics. We've got test prep metrics. And it metrics. isn't that the metrics drive the company. It's just there is awareness for everyone that their job is appreciated. They're coming up with these metrics. And it's being shared with a really large group of people. Yeah. And if you look at everything we do, even down to like the, the Python on hardware newsletter, every week we have, here's a number. You know, I know exactly how many subscribers how many, we have. How many Py, PyPy downloads like how many yeah. you know how many um, people are in discord right how now? many libraries do we have and and I, it's not the whole point isn't to make the numbers go up sometimes you want numbers to go down like how many um uh discrepancies are there in inbound packages yeah. you know you want that number to go down but i think it's it's having the teams trusting the teams to come up with the metrics that's important to them and then sharing that to a wide group of people and then being able to share that knowledge and how to get stuff done together yeah. it's not the most important thing but companies who succeed tend to have this. Yep. And um, there's been a couple of CEOs that I've talked to where I'm like, what's your, do you have like a dashboard, like a web page that shows how you're doing? And only a few have, and the ones that have, have been the ones that have been the most successful. They're like, yes. I remember we, we had one CEO who came, who came by and he actually said, I know exactly how many orders we have had on the store today. Yeah. And, and he'd be like, right then. I was like, okay, I didn't ask. I and we did. did too. And I'm like, oh yeah, well, like, you know, I, I knew what time it was and I knew the last time I looked at I'm like, oh, we have like 927 right now, but give or take a few more. Yeah. Because it's been, you know, I've been away from my computer for a minute. Yeah. So I think that's one of the most important things. Okay. Let's uh, go back to the questions here. Uh, do, 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 do. Will blue? Will, oh well, the blue fruit. We're, blue fruit's not out yet, so we can't. We really can't talk about ask. It. Yeah, yeah, you can't talk. No questions. Okay. Um, no lots questions. of questions about the thing you can't ask questions. About. You can't ask. It doesn't even exist yet, folks. It's a rendering. Yeah. Jeez okay. Louise. Are there any plans for the NRF twenty four one hundred one plus? Not so much. I think the you know the latest Nordic boards actually can do NRF twenty four one hundred one simulation modes. So we might add that. I'd be more interested in that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, it doesn't matter how precisely you're measuring something if you're not measuring the right things. That's yeah, true, too. Exactly. Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, for the questions about Circuit Playground Express. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. I but don't know. I, but, I, but I will say this one. Yes, it'll work on a cricket. Because yeah. that, like, that, that would be, it should be, that would be unusual if yeah. we didn't have that. So. It'll be drop-in replaceable with the Circuit Playground. Yeah. That's the plan. But okay. it doesn't exist yet. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, what age group is Ada Box 12 good for? I would say if I think the, 10 and up? Yeah, if the kid ever liked to play a video game, maybe it'd be a good age or like a kid who could play a video game, probably Ada Box 12 would be a good yeah. Ada Box one. But also, you know, even if a kid that's young, there's some activities that are for very young people, or you can do stuff and the kid can, can play them. So it's, there's a lot of options. Okay. Uh, let's see here. But one thing about Adox is you do it together. It's not just for a kid. I think it's, it works best when in a kid and adult together, they, uh, they build the Adabox. Those are the most, I think, happiest yeah. experiences people have. Okay. Okay. Let's, uh, as some other questions trickle in. Let's do the uh, time trial. Oh, sorry. The, yeah. giveaway. the giveaway. The giveaway. What do you want to give away? We're going to give away a GPS USB. That's a good idea. Great for everybody. Okay, what are the uh, the rules? You can R keep putting questions. R in rules the chat, are the maybe. first person to call the phone number and answer the answer question is going to win one GPS USB, also GPS USB, which is the code as well. Um, to win, I do is call this phone. We're going to have the phone number on the screen, and um, you're going to ring this twice. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to say ahoy ahoy, and I'm going to ask you your name and where you're calling from and a project you are working on or you want to work on, if you're able to answer those questions, you're going to get a free GPS USB module, which is handy. You do all sorts of cool stuff with it. And uh, that's the phone number. So call this phone number. And again, I'm going to say ahoy, ahoy. And then turn down your computer audio. Oh, well, that was fast. That's fast. Well, people want this GPS USB. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to pick it up. Yeah, pick it up. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. This is... Ask Engineer, could you turn down your computer audio? It is down. Great. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, Danny Gregory, calling from Google, Kentucky. Okay, well, congratulations, Danny from Kentucky. You have won a GPS USB 
Congratulations on being the first caller. Yay! That is awesome. That is so awesome. Well, uh, you're awesome, too. Uh, and what's the project you're working on or you want to work on? Uh, we've been, uh, somehow we've been wanting to make uh, some lightning detectors. So the GPS might come in handy to that uh, is. triangulate on that. That's a good idea. All right, well, you can plug it right into your computer and read the location data. That could be super cool for your project. Well, congratulations, Danny. All you have to do to claim your prize is email support at adafruit.com. S-U-P-P-O-R-T at Adafruit.com and say, hey, I want a product number 4279 and they'll ship it right to Kentucky for you. Awesome. All right, well, thank you so much for calling and then if you have a project that you built, come by Chantel. We'd love to see your lightning detector. Stay safe, though. How are you doing? All right, good night. All right, Danny, congratulations. We gave away a GPS USB. We give away something every week, so if you don't win this week, Oh, so people. was that uh, maybe the cricket question was about the AR app? Yeah, we'll probably we'll probably have cricket. Yeah, we'll try, we'll do that. Yeah, this was fun. I think that's what it was. Okay. Okay, I want to show the one last. Can, can you show off this one? Yeah, we do have one. Um, as other questions maybe trickle in. Just um, I know we're late, but it was fun. I did. Yeah. I, I hauled this out. <laughs> what do you want to show? This is. The it's little, a pipe portal. I've seen this before. It's a little pipe portal. I've seen this before. So the, no, no, but the normal pipe portal is, I actually didn't bring a, a full-size one, but the full-size one is this big. Whoa. And this one is teeny. So this is a smaller, it's it does. A, it has all the same stuff? It's all the same stuff, but it's Whoa. so small. And this has the new graphics, so you can tell how um, much faster it updates the text. So give it a second. See, like, boom, such fast screen updates. Thanks to uh, Scott and Dan for working on that. So the Pi Portal Kawaii, or Itsy Bitsy. I don't know what we're going to call this yet. Yeah. Everything we make is kind of small, but upcoming soon. And also we have the uh, the Pi Badge, just like a normal Pi Badge, right? But yeah. this one has Wi-Fi on it. Whoa. Bam, you weren't expecting that. Okay. Well, we'll show more of these maybe in the next week's talk. So yeah. Can Later, folks. Okay. Um, we have... Less than 20 Ada boxes left. Less so it than that fast. 20. So go we to have like 12 box. left. Yeah, go to adabox.com. We'll probably change the next time we refresh it. 12 um, is for how many we have don't left? Forget the code is GPS USB. Uh, that's our show for tonight, Lady Ada. Thank you for say watching. Special thanks to all the people out there in the, the, the maker community. Also, shout out to, to Sherry Huss. She was uh, my hero for a lot of things at Make. And so thank you, Sherry, who. She was. Who, she who did so much. Co founded Maker Fair and. Really, ran Maker Fair. Really ran the event in she an amazing way. She was on top of things. Everything we did when we went to the White House, she was there. Yep. Sure the right Still also a great partier. Yep. Um, special thanks to our entire Adafruit community out there, everyone in Discord. Don't forget to put one of those server boost things so we can get more of these boost, boost. jewels that can make us get this graphic. I don't know what it, yeah. Make us get this thing. And then I think eventually we get a, a jewel holder. We'll do something cool but, with it, though. Yeah, we'll figure it out. And then... Um, we need more internet points. Yeah, internet points are important. Um, Watch then, tomorrow, JP's workshop. JP trash show. Panda. Uh, thanks to Takara, who's in the chat. Thank you, T. And um, in Slack. And uh, that's it. We broadcasted successfully on LinkedIn, by the way. That's another network that we just added. We got approved for the beta, so this video was broadcasted live to LinkedIn awesome. tonight. Awesome. Right. So, anyways, that's everything. That's thanks, our show. Everybody. We'll be here next week. Like we are every week. I think next week we might even have a guest. You have to stay tuned. You never know. Who's our guest? We never know. Or it might even be the week after. We have a lot. There's, there's. There pretty, is there this are summer. Guests, there are guests. Summer is kind of people are in town. They want to come by. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Here everybody. Here is your moment of Zener. We'll Good see night. everybody next week.